If you can't see my head, why do I wear a hat? I know, that does not totally go with it at all. <laughs> I know. Here. There we go. Here. It's a, I no, we'll do this because we're talking about logs. Okay. <laughs> then I just to turn the light on. Okay. Okay, and I, but people can understand. Here's why I wear a hat. Because His head disappears. My head disappears. The blonde is... Now you understand why so many actors in Hollywood have dark hair. But the women have blonde hair, predominantly. Uh, but because, who knows, my blonde hair... The guys hair, have dark hair, I have lose. blonde hair. You basically lost me in the background, so... But, you know, we're, you know, this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about the... Um, How broke is the state of California? Okay, maybe it's not only California that has this challenge. It's actually most of the states in the country right now. They're total broke. I mean, no matter what our president tells you, the states are busted. They're only surviving on stimulus money that he's giving them to keep the states going. Mm -hmm. So part of it, you're going, well, you know, so we're going to tell you about some of the things that they're doing, namely because... We've been hit by most of them, yeah, one we've, way or the other. We've right? seen most of them, and of course, this morning, I got a ticket for doing a California stop. On a street that none of the police officers stop at. They Actually, run. you know, I will just tell you, it's in my neighborhood. There's a police officer stationed in my neighborhood to, to give people tickets give now. Give people tickets because they're having to use the street to get through because the city has torn up the street, Utter Street. Mm -hmm. They have deliberately funneled people through on her street, which is a family street. It shouldn't be you have a heavy traffic on it, so that they can basically give tickets to people. Yeah. Yeah, but don't worry about it. I mean, I'll tell you this. My father was a motorcycle officer. My father would go into the morning, which this is back at, before World War II, and they'd give them ticket books and tell them don't come back until the books are full. Well, I mean, at least the, the, you know, of course, I'm half asleep because it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But, I mean, the officer was cordial. You know, he asked, can I see your uh, driver's license? Do you have your insurance? You know what I mean? They go through the typical stuff. So, you know, part of it is, is remember your wall because otherwise you get another ticket. Yeah. Well, it's why I don't drive in California because I get DWOs. Yeah, driving while old. Driving while old. They'll, if you got a disable, I had a disable sticker on my car. That just drew people <laughs> like a beacon because of the fact they know if you're old and disabled and you have a disability sticker that you have to have your car to get around in so they basically can stick you for ungodly amounts of money. I made the same ticket five times. Mm -hmm. The very same ticket five times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they apologize for only one of them. So. so part of it, you're thinking, well, you know, what do you, you know, because the first thing, the first thing, I don't know about you, when I see a police officer, I'm all of a sudden, you're going, am I doing everything right? So part of it is, it's like you instantly freeze in whatever you're doing. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't make any difference. Isn't if it you were doing anything wrong, you're like, ugh. Everybody, okay, uh, what was it? My father told me a long time ago when he was alive, he said that everybody does something wrong while they're driving and they wait for you to do that thing that's wrong. You cannot go from point A to point B without breaking something. All some they have law. to do is follow you, right? So they're going to get you one way or another. The following alone. My father. The following he, alone okay, will make you nervous. Here's one. My father and his partner used to get people to they get them to rabbit it by putting the lights on. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they would just see if they could get the guys to do something or the girls. They flipped the light on and all of a sudden they'd make a mistake, you know. So here's, for, first of all, for, so here's your vehicle checklist, right? I mean, most of these things, okay, of course, your license plate should be current. Yep. Okay. You should have no broken windshields. That's right. And these sound really elementary. Um, everybody should be wearing their seatbelt. Everybody. And, and no, uh, no. No children's in the front seat. Yeah, no busted, no, no busted lights because if they see light, if they see white light coming out from a tail light, that's an offense. And you must make certain that that light over your license plate works. Yeah, make sure they can see your license plate. And I mean, these are like some basic things. Make certain things. that you actually have front and back plates. Oh. And make certain that you're not driving. I mean, we saw a guy in a what was it a Jaguar. Yesterday, he was putting his arms. He was, he was arm singing out, but his tag on the back said nineteen. It had two thousand and seven on the back. See, most of these things are kind of like a given. They're already taken care of on your car, and so. But if they're not, then of course it makes you even more nervous while yeah. you're out there driving. And, and don't use the cell phone while you're driving, folks, because that's they're up for that. Mm -hmm. Luckily, she was not 
using the cell phone while she was driving. And um, yes, especially don't text. Now, part of that that does not only that that text. They just don't want you using the cell phone. It's that, that doesn't have to do with the driver. Is anybody in the car? Okay. In other words, so like my niece was in the car with me, and she's going like this. I said, "Don't do that in the car." It says occupants, folks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say driver. It says occupants on the. So it's because people go like this, and of course everybody could see. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh no, they can't see you down here. Well, remember, if it's dark at night, there's a reflection. So. Just like when you're driving, you can see somebody watching a TV show yeah. or a movie. Yeah, like, it stands out like a beacon. Oh, you go by. I mean, we go we go to Las Vegas, and you know, for trade shows and stuff. And there'll be people setting in their pickup trucks or in their in their vans or cars with that thing up in the front that's supposed to be a GPS system, but actually showing movies. They're watching movies as they're driving down the road on that thing in the front. Mm -hmm. Which isn't supposed to show movies, and, but it does. And then there's another thing too, because part of it is I do have a tablet in the car, and I use my tablet for navigation. Yeah, which is probably going to be a no-no. We're going to probably also. make that a no-no. Although you know, somehow we still have navigation that we're able to have in the car. Yeah, but uh, it's just uh, it's just like we've told people repeatedly about the beaches in California. They say, you know, that what like we don't wear some of her suits on the beaches because. Even though you bought suits up, you know, 20 foot from the beach, the, anybody that works for the uh, county, I guess, can give you a ticket on a California beach. For I know all it takes. You don't have to be a police officer. You don't have to be a police officer. They can give you a citation for public indecency, and they decide what's indecency. And we, and they don't. If you go to court, you generally win the case. But if you lose the case, what happens is you know, okay. If you get to, basically. Here's, here's the double standard. If you go to court and fight it, they list it on the court record as um, as a sex offender case. If you win it, they still have sex offender case. You can't get it taken yeah, well, off. Way. So that's why we don't do some things at the beaches that you'd like to see because the the, the states are flat ass broke. Mm -hmm. They they uh, we have no budget in California again because. Uh, they can't seem to understand the idea is you don't keep spending money, you don't raise taxes and chase people out, you stop spending money, which they're not doing because the reason why there's a police officer parked down the street from this building is because they're tearing up a road that they just got through working on with the beautification project a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. They're taking all of the beautification stuff out and tearing it all up. And I was traveling during a period which would be a high traffic period. Um, yeah, and so of course while I'm sitting there, it's like everybody else runs the stop sign while I'm getting a ticket. Oh, everybody makes uh, everybody makes California stop there because it's a residential neighborhood. Because you slow down, you stop. There's nobody there, and actually, you don't even. There's no no road on this side. This yeah. is the, the right. So all you're looking at is for traffic the one direction. Oh yeah, but they used to, the funny is they used to have a thing that made you go in a circle. Yeah, that one was. Bad. That was also to give you tickets. You had to go in a circle to get around, which was sort of, it was an experiment which they made a lot of money off of. But here's the big ticket, is this deal. They do a god-awful amount of filming over here. Yeah. And those guys do not, they do rolling stops with all their equipment. But see, part of it is, they may, it's not, okay, just because everybody, this is what I, my mother would tell me, just because everybody else is breaking the law doesn't mean you can break the law. Right? That's the, and just because you happen to be the one that got a ticket, I mean, you know, like, what am I supposed to go go in front of the judge and say, well, yeah, I did a rolling stop, but everybody else did it? You're still getting the ticket. According to the California prima facie law, you're right. <laughs> that if everybody else is doing it according to the prima facie law, it is acceptable. But the problem is, is that we'll also go to... You know, like I, I tell people, I, I was one of the soldiers on the Dirty Dozen. You know, one of the I played MPs. And I also played German. I played everything else. But the big one of the big things is in the jailhouse when he's talking to Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson it got put in jail cell because he basically shot a guy that was running an officer was running off with all the medical supplies. And he's and he's telling you know, Lee Marvin, yeah, but I, what I did was right. And then Lee Marvin says. I know that, but you got caught. Yeah, see, here, here's here's the issue. Is there's a prima facie law, right, that mm -hmm. says 
What, what is purification? And basically, yeah, you, you travel with the flow of the, of the traffic. If everybody in the traffic is making illegal left turns, it's all right for you to make an illegal left turn. Mm -hmm. But everybody else doesn't get caught. If you're the one, you have to prove that everyone else was making the illegal left turns. You can beat it by simply standing down there with a television camera and filming one car after another car and filming Oh, them. guess what we're going to do later. <laughs> yeah, except in California it's illegal to film people. Oh, no, that's the audio. The audio, but if you catch their voices, and a lot of people come down here with their windows down. Well, we'll do it without no audio. Yeah. So if you would pull the audio, okay. still. But they still. See, part of it is, is there's a stop sign, yeah. but there's um, the there's nothing over here. There's The street doesn't continue, right? Yeah. And so it's basically, here's the street, and then here's where the police guy was, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, but we can we can basically handle this with an episode of Matlock. Uh, let's see, on the episode of Matlock, Andy Griffin knew he didn't he, he wasn't breaking the law. He said uh, everybody was doing the same thing, so I went there and filmed everybody doing the same thing. Oh. So then they said, okay, we, we suspend the ticket for you, you know, doing it because everybody else was doing it. But we're going to give you a ticket for something else. We're going to give you a ticket for illegally filming people at the corner without their permission. Mm. So, uh, so, and the, the, so he did the, he did the rolling stop too. Everybody did oh, the rolling stop. I know what, we'll put a sign up before, see, and that's also part, illegal. You put a sign up beforehand, then you're changing their pattern of behavior. Yeah, and you can be ticketed for that also. It's like, it is a crime to warn people that there is a, a stakeout in the area. There's a crime to, it's a crime to warn people that there is a traffic officer like over at the beach. It is a crime to tell the people at the beach that they're giving over they're you're giving tickets if you cross the deadline for wearing your swimsuit. So here's a here's part of it is it's like you're, you're sitting there thinking, how do you get out of the ticket? Okay, we can do one. Help the bikinis are get out of the ticket. Yeah, you know. Uh you can't because they can cite you for an indecent exposure in your automobile. What? Uh, wearing a bikini in a car could be considered an I was wearing the robe. I know, but if you, the bikinis are oh. wearing a bikini, you can be cited for the, you know, uh, possible, possible causing a traffic problem. You cannot, well, see. there is, I mean, okay, I told you, my father was, my father was a, he was basically a, uh, you know, a movie cop, which basically his job was to go around movie sets, his job was to hustle people back and forth. Okay. But he did do traffic stuff. And I've heard every line. There is no line that will get you out of a traffic ticket because the instant they put the pencil to it, you're you're stuck. You can't. I mean, well, I, part yeah. And part of it was he grabbed the stuff before he said anything, and I'm having sleep, and then he started writing it. So it's like yeah. he starts writing it. He's not. He's gonna continue it. They yeah. they don't. They no, do not void no, out traffic tickets because they got. They have to fill out a book because it's just. I mean, I figured that. Uh, I once figured that. Um, every police officer is worth like a hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars a year to the to the Los Angeles Police Department in tickets that they write. They spend more time writing tickets than they do going to crimes. I mean, uh, if if he got a thing, he would not leave the ticket to answer. Uh, you know, a, a call. You know, well, there's a shooting over here, and, and seventeen people have been murdered. Well, it's like, well, I could I be have, here and write all these tickets because I, I got to finish my book. Yeah, you have to you have to write the tickets. You can't you can't finish got a ticket. I mean, um, I mean, I once got a ticket. I can guarantee you, I got a ticket for doing 25 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone because the guy wanted to get a look at my Your significant car. other and my car. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, really hot, not long flowing hair. And you know, wearing a little tube top and little tiny. We're talking back in the days when you could wear mini skirts like that, you know. And he wanted to see it, mm -hmm. so he gave us a ticket for driving 25 in a 25 mile an hour zone. And my father went to court with me. My father had on his his his, his sergeant's mm -hmm. uniform, and we walk in, and you know, it's police. Basically, he was in his. His, you know, stormtroopers outfit with his helmet under his arm and his gloves on and his gun, and then they have this other pipsqueak that was a patrol car guy, and he asked the judge simply, "Would you kindly read the the ticket?" And he said, uh, 
uh, said, this, like Jeff says, this correct? And my father said, you can ask the officer. He has the copy in his book, which we've already subpoenaed and have a copy of. And, uh, and, and then his sergeant had to come up. Yes, uh, we do know that the officer wrote a ticket that said driving 25 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone and that it was a regrettable mistake. Uh, they, it was regrettable to the point that the, the uh, judge charged the officer for the time that was wasted coming to court. And he also pointed out that my father was doing his civic, my father was doing his job as a police officer defending the public, unlike the other officer who was doing his job looking at a young lady, you know, dressed very scantily in an automobile and mm -hmm. a hot car that he wanted to examine. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he got read the riot act and had to basically he worked a lot of holiday a lot, a lot of his off days were worked to pay the court cost of what happened. You know what I just realized? Like you had said, because I always slow down at the stop sign to stop. Yeah. Right. And then I started pulling out, and then I saw the guy, and then I stopped again, because I'm yeah, like, was that? That gets you. So he thought, he probably thought I didn't stop at all. I know. What happened? Which I stopped twice. Well, I did the same thing. Oh, I mean, now. Okay. No, what happened was, I didn't realize there's some streets you can't go down at certain times of the day, so I, I started to make my right turn, and then all of a sudden I saw the thing, and I stopped, and the guys behind me are honking wanting me to get out of the way, and I'm committed to right. So, I went right because I couldn't get...